Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus, which are contained in the Gospels, and this week, the parable of the wedding feast, which is found in the Gospel of Luke. It's a pretty good-sized parable, making some important recommendations, so let's take a look. And he spoke a parable also to them that were invited, marking how they chose the first seats of the table, saying to them, When thou art invited to a wedding, sit not down in the first place, lest perhaps one more honorable than thou be invited by him. Luke 14, 7-8 Jewish wedding feasts were especially long and extravagant, but most people of the time would have recognized the significance of a feast or feast-like gathering in this context, that some people would be at positions closer to the head of the table and others further away. It was generally understood that the closer you were to the head of the table, the more people would look at you during the meal, the idea being that others would respect you more because they'd seen you in that position, particularly if the person being married was rich, powerful, or related to someone who was. The overall concept is similar to what's now called community organizing, where a powerful or famous person is placed in a public venue alongside a complete unknown for the purpose of artificially convincing the general public that the complete unknown should also be respected. It's basically a way to trick people into thinking someone is more important, accomplished, or honorable than they really are, though it requires conspiring with a powerful, respected person and someone to gather a crowd of people to witness the event, or the deception can't really get off the ground. In Jesus' time, this kind of thing was being attempted on a smaller scale, and without any planned conspiracies to make it happen, each person was just trying to make themselves look more respectable by picking a seat that would be more likely to associate them with the main participants of the event, in the hopes of improving what other people thought of them. Jesus warns people against doing this by saying that it could backfire horribly. If, for example, George, who saved the life of the groom once, should happen to be there too, and the groom naturally wants George to sit near him at the wedding table. And he that invited thee and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and then thou begin with shame to take the lowest place. Luke 14, 9 If you have to get up and give your seat to George, you might find that, as with a game of musical chairs, all the other good seats have been taken already, and have to spend the rest of the evening at the little table in the corner of the room where nobody can really see you all that well because the light isn't very good. That's pretty embarrassing. But when thou art invited, go. Sit down in the lowest place, that when he who invited thee cometh, he may say to thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have glory before them that sit at table with thee. Luke 14.10. If, on the other hand, you start off sitting in the worst spot in the house, your host might end up noticing this and decide to give you a better seat. Then there'd be no question about your association with him, because he would have done something to honor you directly in front of all the guests. Because everyone that exalteth himself shall be humbled, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Luke 14.11. The purpose of this parable isn't concerned exclusively with seating arrangements, but with how we shouldn't flatter ourselves and should let others give us honor instead. Of course, this doesn't mean we shouldn't go out of our way to do good things for others. We should, when we have the chance, and that would increase the chances of others honoring us, but trying to claim honor for ourselves directly is putting the cart before the horse. And he said to him also that had invited him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, Call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, nor thy kinsmen, nor thy neighbors who are rich, lest perhaps they also invite thee again, and a recompense be made to thee. Luke 14, 12 Too many people use social gatherings like community dinners as primarily a means of networking or making connections, and all of that is just focused on gaining an advantage in this current world. Jesus says it's best not to place the focus on that. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, because they have not wherewith to make thee recompense. For recompense shall be made thee at the resurrection of the just. Luke 14, 13-14 Actually, it was culturally expected of rich people holding big social events to invite the poor, because there were no government welfare programs back then, so if you didn't help the poor, they generally died. However, unfortunately... Far too many rich people, including some of the Pharisees, neglected this practice. It's a shame, because as Jesus points out, helping people who can't help you back is far better, and earns a reward from God, which is far superior to anything sacrificed to gain it. 
Of course, that reward will be given at what Jesus calls the resurrection of the just, the final time at the end of the world, when the faithful will all be restored to life and given a place in the new heavens by God. Could anything be more worthwhile than that? Next, the sheep and the goats. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.